Hello everyone, Happy New Years, and welcome back to Dark Dives. Once again, I continue to please you guys with my consistent uploading schedule. <coughs> In this episode, I really wanted to change the formula of the show around a little bit, so the whole video doesn't have shots of me in it. Let me know if you guys like the face cam stuff more, or a more concise video essay like the one I'm doing right now. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Seriously, we are so close to 100,000 subs, I, I literally cannot thank you guys enough. I can't even like fathom that number. I mean, I remember back in the day when we were making 200 subscriber specials with Butterfield fighting a giant anime villain in my backyard. It's just super crazy and I can't thank you guys enough. So, without further ado, let's take a look at the subject of this video. Something that I've discussed on this channel quite often. The Uncanny Valley. What is your biggest fear? Sharks? Bugs? The ocean? Aside from cockroaches, seriously I found out those things can fucking fly. <laughs> My biggest fear has always been something not as easily explainable. The uncanny valley. Now what does this word mean exactly? According to all my collected research, links down below, the uncanny valley is a psychological idea that dates back to the 1970s by a man named Masahiro Mori. The concept describes the uneasy and repulsive feeling people often have in regards to artificial representations of human beings. So basically when a non-human object is given some human qualities. Like if a hat was given some eyes or something. Oh, look at him. But once you continue to increase the human qualities to the object, the more it appears like some cursed replica struggling to be a perfect representation of a human. Some examples you might be familiar with would be CGI renders, robots, and of course, mannequins. So who just was Masahiro Mori? During this time, he was a professor at the Tokyo Institute of Technology. He created the phrase Uncanny Valley to explain the varying reactions people had to his institute robots. He noticed the more the robots acted like a random dude, the more people loved it. So why not bump up the ante, right? Well, it soon reached a boiling point when the features such as human skin, lips, hair, hands, and of course the eyes were added to these robots. So it added this sense of unease in the room that no one could quite explain. Mori then stated the origin for this phrase in an interview with IEEE Spectrum. Quote, Since I was a child, I never liked looking at wax figures. They looked somewhat creepy to me. At the time, electronic prosthetic hands were being developed, and they triggered in me the same kind of sensation. These experiences had made me start thinking about robots in general, which led me to write that essay. The Uncanny Valley was my intuition. It was one of my ideas. I want to bring up the idea of shapeshifters and doppelgangers because of the many connections they have with the Uncanny Valley. While shapeshifters are known as entities who transform from one thing to another, Doppelgangers are different. Doppelganger is a German word that defines a ghostly apparition of a living person. They cast no shadows and are usually seen as an omen of bad luck. If you were to see your own doppelganger, it essentially just meant that death is coming your way and there's nothing you can do to stop it. The reason I bring this up is because the fear of the uncanny valley is rooted in cultures all over the world and throughout history. Skinwalkers, from what we know of the Navajo legends, are witches that are able to transform into a variety of animals, often associated with the coyote especially. Now take most of the skinwalker information with some skepticism, as genuine info on them is very difficult to find due to the Navajo people's reluctance to discuss the witches, and with the abundance of scary story encounter videos and stuff all over the internet, it just makes it really difficult to find legit information about them. But I still want to compare them together anyways because I do see some connections with some of the Skinwalker stories. The uncanny valley with the Skinwalkers usually lies within their appearance and their movement. Some stories claim that the eyes give away the disguise, as when they transform into different animals, the human eyes remain within the beast's face. Other stories have claimed the witches as animals that appear not quite human, but not fully animal. Just this disgusting, almost anamorph hybrid. Which also goes to show that the uncanny valley effect isn't exclusively held with technology, like robots and CG. It can also be with animal hybrids. Why not? 
I want to discuss these creatures further, but I think I'll save them for their own future dark dive in like five months looking at my schedule. So let's move on to the next example. The last one I want to discuss is the Napara bow of Japanese folklore. I feel like I don't have to go into too much detail about this thing because, um... Look out! Yeah, this yokai is the stuff of nightmares as it is usually encountered on roads late at night. Once a wandering traveler stumbles upon this faceless fuck, it turns around to reveal its shiny smooth features. Or I guess lack thereof. Now I will admit, this is kind of cheating with the uncanny valley as this is actually terrifying due to the lack of human qualities, but I still think it works if we look back at the definition. The concept describes the uneasy and repulsive feeling people often have in regards to artificial representation of human beings. So that doesn't specifically mean something has to have full on human traits like eyes, mouths, or whatever. As long as something is mimicking the form of a humanoid, it still falls under that category. In this case, the yokai is trying to mimic a human, but the feature it leaves out is the one we as humans are born with to recognize, the face. Once that is completely wiped away, all human qualities are lost, as this creature uses the fear of the uncanny valley to terrify its victims. I have a gift for you, you, you. I have a present. Here are some of my recommendations to get kind of an overall feel of the Uncanny Valley if you don't just want my word from it. So the first one I want to list off is the Mandela Catalog Volume 1, or really just this entire channel by itself. This YouTube series has gotten a lot of popularity in the last couple of months, and I think it really encapsulates the Uncanny Valley and overall feeling of the unease perfectly. The alligator on the moon effect, it'll catch on eventually. But yeah, while I'd say for the most part this series can be funny at times, oh, <laughs> oh my god, it's God. <laughs> Is that the hashlinging slasher? I really don't want to spoil too much of it, so just pull out some Uncrustables, put on some headphones, get cozy and enjoy some spooks. Please check it out, link down below. Another YouTube video I'm pretty sure a lot of you are familiar with is the I Feel Fantastic clip. Hey, hey, hey. I remember seeing it used on a YouTube poop years and years ago and it still haunts me to this day. This lifeless robot mixed with the off-putting singing and finally topped off with the old-fashioned YouTube quality, you know? There's a lot of strange stuff regarding the background of this video, but I'm pretty sure it's just a guy building a bunch of singing robots. Not a deranged serial killer dressing up the lifeless android like all of his victims, but check it out. For my last recommendation, here are some stories, books, and movies to look up if you want some more of the Uncanny Valley and Doppelgangers and those kind of media. Each of these are very different from each other, but overall I'd say they are all worth looking into. Even if it's just a quick YouTube summary. This concludes the second part of this series. I'm really going to try and make more of these. They are honestly so much fun to do, and I just love looking into different cultures and all these different scary stuff across the world. So I'm really hoping this one does well enough and you guys find them interesting. If you have any more topics or, or horror characters you want me to take a look at, please let me know in the comments down below. And as always, have a good one.